We're doing problem 14.6 from the fundamentals of chapter 14. And this one's a bit tricky. Uh, it's very easy, but it's trying to throw you off, right? <clears throat> um, so let's let's uh, kind of apply what, we, what we've what uh, we done in the past already. Um, uh, let's read, the, read it first, I guess. Uh, so five pound collars pulled by a cord that passes around a small peg C. If the cord is subjected to a constant force F, and the collar is at rest when it is at A, determine its speed when it reaches B. Okay, so it starts at rest, right? Um, so we know <coughs> T1, so initial kinetic energy, is zero. T2 is unknown. We're trying to get BB, right? Um, so let's see. Let's let's now that we've done the kinetic energies, let's do the put the uh, the work done by conservative forces or not conservative forces. And the reason I say these terms is because we're gonna, once we begin doing, um, I think the fundamentals of fourteen ten and on, that's kind of where we're going to be um, unstacking all these conservative forces, not conservative forces, and all that, and the potentials. But anyways, let's keep going. So we have U12 of the spring, right? So remember, I, right now, I, I know there's no spring. The only reason I'm doing this is to make it easy for everyone to kind of just see what are all the potentials associated with this, um, um, you know, uh, particle right now. So is there a spring? No. So there's no work done by a spring in this problem. Is there a change in height? Is there work done by gravity? Okay. So remember, this is W delta Y. Um, it goes from point A to point B. Is there a change in height here? No, there's no. There's none. So this is also zero. Um, what else? Let's think. Let's think. Neglect friction. So is there any work done by a non-conservative force, which is friction? No. There isn't. So by non, let's call it NC, non-conservative. Also zero because there's no friction. Huh. That's interesting. So there's no spring. There's no gravitational. So what's the only thing that's left for us here? Well, there is an actual force F, ten pounds, being applied a certain amount of distance to um, do work on that particle A. Okay. So. Let's say, let's call it C by for from for conservative force, right? So remember, this is F dot D, right? Which ends up being F D cosine theta. All right. So what's the force? Well, the force is ten pounds. Okay. What's the distance? Mm, we'll find that out. And then what is cosine? What's the theta between the distance and the force? If we switch it up a bit. If we go to, let's switch it to red color. So this, you know, this is the initial position. Okay. All right. Okay. I know that this is a three, four, five triangle, so I know that this is five feet. All right. Now this particle is going to be pulled, or sorry, the rope is being pulled to the left, a certain distance. Okay. And it ends up, um, you know, a certain distance, and it ends up being this total length. I'm gonna kind of draw it. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Alright, this. So that's only three feet. So let's say this is like the final position, right? Of the rope. Right. This is the distance that we care about. How what's the distance that that rope was pulled to the left? Right? We know that this is four, but that's this distance, right, right here, um, 
is not going to be four feet, right? So the we didn't apply the ten pounds for four feet. Okay, we applied it for a certain amount. Okay, and we're trying to find that distance. All right, so um, you might be able to kind of oh I know what it is now just because now that now that you going through it this way, you easily visualize it now. Um, so you know it, it started as five feet. It ended up being three feet, okay? So then, what does that tell us about the the distance that it changed? Well, initially, uh, let's say delta x, right? It's I, you can you can just say five minus three, right? This is um, that's the total distance that I pulled it for but to like think about it a little further it's like okay I know it's five feet plus some constant right uh, that this this part of the rope that red part right here is a, it's some some uh, constant I don't know let's say it's four feet initially right and then after that it's four feet or that constant plus some other distance that I pulled it with. So it's going to be minus 3 plus, um, I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess I can't say it's constant because now it's like even lo longer. I was trying to break it down a little further. Um, yeah, I guess that'll be like constant, like C2. Oh, no, that's, that's too complicated. Never mind. All right. Anyways, but the, the the point is that initially the rope was five feet. It ends up being three feet after. So where's the 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 extra distance go to? It went to um, this purple distance that it that it traveled, or you applied the force for. All right. So that gives us a two feet. So when we go back to here, how how much work does that force do on the particle A? Well, I applied that force uh, of 10 pounds for 2 feet, right? The angle between those two, remember the distance vector is in this direction and the force vector is in this direction. The angle between them is 0, okay? So that gives me 20 pound-feet, okay? Or actually, I'm just going to do this pound-feet because I... Can't remember the the joule the you know in SI system we use joules in English system. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know. Um, anyways, so we have everything needed now. So once we're here, uh, let's just apply it to let's apply the uh, work energy theory theorem. Uh, this is one two equals t two. Okay. What's T1? Well, it's zero. What are all my all the work done by conservative and non-conservative forces? Well, I have zero from the spring, zero from the gravitational energy, or gravity, uh, work done by gravity, zero from friction, and then I have my plus 20 equals my T2, which I actually am curious to know what it is. So it's 5 divided by 32.2. That's the mass times VB squared. Okay, remember guys, switch, divide your pounds by 32.2 to get your mass. Happens all the time where um, that's like the one problem, that's the one mistake you make in the whole test and it costs you your uh, your A plus. Uh, 20 times 2 uh, times 32.2 divided by 5 divided by whatever else and you end up with VB a 16.05 uh, feet per second oops just feet per second all right and that's it um, so again you don't have to write down the zero 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 I'm just making sure I put everything on paper so you guys can see it um, most of you will see that uh, okay, uh, these terms are obviously zero. I'm just going to skip ahead and just do 20 equals my final kinetic energy. Because you, from here you can recognize that, okay, there's 
there's nothing happening. Um, gravity's not, there's no change in height, there's no springs, there's no friction, right? So you don't have to worry about any of that. But again, if you just want to, if it if it's, gives you peace of mind to include everything, go ahead, do it, go ahead and do it. But yeah, final answer is about roughly 16 feet per second. I hope this video helped. Um, you know, if you have questions, comments, concerns, recommendations, please drop them down below. I'm always reading the comments and making sure I, I answer to you guys in a promptly manner. Um, thanks, guys. I really appreciate your time and attention, and I'll see you guys in the next video.